What's up YouTube? My name is Jazz. I am a certified nutritional therapist and a private chef to professional athletes. You might know me from the Instagram recipes for health where I create simple recipes for any level cook in the kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. This is a bit of a difficult topic for me. I finally want to open up, tell you guys what happened to me last year. On May 23rd, 2019, I was riding my bike and I was hit by a car. So this particular morning, it was a Thursday morning and I was on my way to a beach yoga class at 8 a.m. So if you can imagine, my mood was really chill. I had gotten a beach cruiser a week before. I hopped on that 7.45 in the morning. I had my sandals on, no helmet, and I made my way to the beach, which was about 10 minutes away by bike. When I think back, there was a voice that I heard in my head, and that voice kept telling me, go on the sidewalk. I didn't listen to the voice. I was on the bike lane, which was right next to the street. Cars are going about 40 miles per hour on the street. There's a million other bikes. There's people running on the sidewalk. It's pretty happening. I didn't wanna go on the sidewalk because I didn't wanna go into where the people were walking and running. I didn't wanna make them feel uncomfortable with a bike, but the voice kept saying, go on the sidewalk. I didn't listen. The next thing I know, I was on the ground. I heard a loud screech. I heard a crash. People yelling, call 911. I had no idea what happened. I looked back, I was awake. I woke up, I looked back. This young, beautiful lady came outside of her car, which her car was damaged. The whole windshield was cracked. I had no idea what had happened. And she's yelling, I fell asleep. She was a nurse and she was coming back from her night shift. She fell asleep probably 0.5 miles from her house and I was one minute from the beach. I didn't register that I had hit her windshield and my bike was completely totaled and I was on the ground. I had no idea what happened. I was just, I woke up and I said, I need to call my husband, call my husband. Didn't know where my phone was, didn't know where my bag was. Shoes were completely gone. Yeah, my head just really, really hurt. They called my husband for me. He rushed there at the same time they had called 911. So the ambulance rushed there as well. My husband got there right in time to go to the hospital with me. I remember in the ambulance my body was super cold at this point i had leggings on and a shirt like this with a sports bra because they wanted to check to see what had happened and if i had any road rash or they had to rip my clothes off and i will never forget that that shirt that i was wearing that day it said be kind to one another which i'll bring it back to that because it's very interesting how that plays back went to the hospital i was there for about six hours they did a whole bunch of mri ct scans x-rays husband was there my brother-in-law came he actually went to the accident site and picked up all of my belongings. So like everything was left there. My bike, my shoes, my bag. After all of the tests that day, they just checked for internal bleeding. There were a few things that they noticed. I had two herniated discs in my neck. My cuboid bone on my left foot was broken. I also had road rash all on the side of my left side of my body. So from my ankle to my knees, to my hip, to my back, to my shoulder, elbow, this part of my head. I don't know where it hit, but this part was about this big. Had a concussion. They said, you're a miracle. You're going to be really, really sore, but you're going to be fine. Laying there in the hospital, I had so much gratitude. I was so grateful. I was so grateful to be alive. We were thanking God the whole time. Another really beautiful thing that he did was uh, he ended up texting everyone in his phone book without me knowing. And he said, just pray for her. Just pray for Jazz. And everyone did. I really think that everyone's prayers and thoughts that day miraculously healed me in the hospital. So I made it home and I couldn't walk and I couldn't move this side of my body. I was given crutches and a boot. My in-laws came the next day. I had a lot of help around the house. I went from the person doing everything to the person that needed everything done for them. I couldn't even go to the bathroom myself. It was very humbling to have everything taken away from you in a split second. But I had this amazing support system. My in-laws were there for five days. So as soon as they 
they left, my best friend flew out from California. As soon as she left, my brother took time off work from California and came out to take care of me. As soon as he left, my mom came out for another week. The different emotions that I felt through, I would say probably the first two weeks were wild. I was really scared at first. I wasn't going to be able to do anything that I had done before and all the things that I love. I'm a spin instructor. That was really difficult for me to have that taken away from me. Obviously I couldn't cook because I couldn't stand up. So that was taken away from me. I didn't know if I was gonna be, ever be able to be the same and have the same lifestyle that I had. And, and then I went through a phase of being sad that this had happened to me. And I was trying to find reasons to justify it, which is really, really messed up. That was just one of the emotions that I went through. And then I was angry. I was angry at myself on choosing to go to yoga that day, that I chose to leave at that time, that I hadn't listened to that inner voice to get on the sidewalk. I kind of felt like if I had done things differently, I wouldn't have been in this space. The overwhelming feeling of being grateful superseded all of those other emotions. And still to this day, I have that emotion of being grateful. I'm grateful every single day. And I thank God every single day, I got to live another day and I got to experience another day on this earth. My life was saved that day through a miracle. So two weeks passes, I'm really not able to move very well still. Still need a lot of help. I'm still bruised and I still have road rash. I have major, major headaches because of the concussion. I'm super dizzy all the time. I kind of can't be around loud noises. It would be too much. Like my brain capacity couldn't handle everything. I couldn't think very long. I didn't have a long attention span. No way could music be on. No way could the TV be on. It was just too much to take in. I couldn't physically and emotionally handle anything that I heard. So week two is when I started actually going to doctors. My attorney referred me to an amazing chiropractor. I'm gonna leave his information below. It's Dr. Murray. Him and his team literally saved my life. So I lived at the chiropractor, I joke, for that summer. I went there about three days a week and each session was maybe anywhere from three to four hours. We did mobility, we did exercises, massages, a bunch of neurological practices. So after about week four, Four, I still couldn't walk and I still couldn't bend my left knee. In case you didn't know, I've had two left knee surgeries before. One was in high school. I tore my ACL and meniscus together. About four years ago, I tore my meniscus in that same knee and I had to get another knee surgery. So my left knee is like the most precious little part of my body. I love it so much and it's been through a lot. I don't know why I just got emotional about that. A huge part of who I am, my left knee. <laughs> When I couldn't move my left knee, I was super scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go again. I'm gonna have to have another knee surgery. Something's gonna be wrong. If you haven't watched the documentary, Heal, I ended up watching that documentary a few times during my healing process. And I took a lot of the concepts that they teach in that documentary to help heal my body. So go check it out. I think it's on Netflix. I took an MRI on my knee. And if you guys have ever taken an MRI before, they're long and they're loud. I decided for the, the whole entire time where I was in the MRI machine, I I was going to reimagine my knee sewn back together. And the loud sounds of the boom, 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 that was like little triggers in my knee, like putting it back together. So the entire time I just imagined that and I visualized that. It's super weird, I know. I just really needed help. I needed, I needed to heal. Five days later, I got the results back and my doctor gave me a call and I was like holding my breath. I remember, I think Alyssa was sitting next to me. I picked up the phone and he was like, you're good. Your knee looks perfect. And that was kind of like the last thing that I was waiting for, for like the okay, I'm like, you're gonna be okay, Jazz. I decided there's two ways that I'm gonna move forward from this accident. And one way is sulking and being upset and saying, why me? Why did this happen to me? That was one path that I could have taken that would have taken me to the rest of my life. The other path was having gratitude every single day and doing everything in my own power to get back to where I was before the accident. It was a no brainer for me. I wanted it too badly. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to heal so badly. There was no other option. I decided I'm gonna take everything into my own hands. I'm gonna go to all the doctors. I'm gonna do all my rehab exercises. I'm gonna work on my mind. I'm gonna work on my brain. I'm going to try to heal myself from the inside out. And Next three months were huge for me. There was about eight things that I did every single day that helped heal me and bring me out 
of the grief of getting hit by a car. And I want to share those with you because it can help you wherever you may be in your life. You do not have to have gone through an accident to be able to take away from this. You could apply these concepts and help get you out of it and help you live the best life that you were meant to live on this earth. Number one, scripting. So what is scripting? It basically just means writing out things that you want as if you have that. For example, for me, when I couldn't walk, I wrote out a journal and a hundred times I would write out, I just got back from running one mile on the beach. I just got back from teaching a spin class. I just got back from doing a one hour workout and I feel amazing. I would write these things as if they had already happened and I was writing about them. And it's so neat to look back on that because it's always humbling to remember where you came from and where you are now. And I look back on that journal thinking, I'm so lucky that I can do all of those things that I longed to do when I could move. Number two is my meditation. So I specifically use the Simple Habit app. They had a bunch of different programs on trauma and like how to heal from trauma. And there were like seven day exercises of like five to 10 minute meditation. It's like almost a form of therapy. Therapy and it's just all on your phone and you can do it on your own time. Tip number three is my gratitude journal. This was so important to just have some positivity in my life when I felt like there was nothing. And I'm sure we can all relate to this at times in our life. We feel like nothing's going our way. There's always something to be grateful for. One of the ways that I always started was I'm alive. I am alive and I'm breathing. I smell the fresh air and I can give my loved ones a hug. Every single day I read about 20 things that I was grateful for in that moment. Tip number four, I did five minute presence exercise which just means you're present for five minutes. So wherever you're sitting, whether you're outside, whether you're inside, you're just present. You're listening to your thoughts, you're listening to your body. Say it's just a form of consciousness to just like be aware and be here. Tip number five, I did a super anti-inflammatory diet. So I kind of went MIA off of Instagram for about two months just because it wasn't my main priority and I didn't really have much capacity to like give others. Cut out all sugar, I cut out all gluten. There's nothing wrong with those things necessarily, but for someone that's really, really Really injured and you're really inflamed inside it's always great to take it back and want to heal your body from within I didn't drink and the reason for that was because I did a lot of research and I talked to my doctors a lot about my healing concussion I was really nervous about my brain I wasn't as sharp as I usually am let's just say that and still to this day that's like actually one of the things that I still struggle with is um, sometimes I don't remember the words that I want to try to say but that's okay because the people around me know that and they'll help me out but one of the things that's really not not good for when you're healing your brain and your, the neurological aspect is drinking alcohol. Cut out alcohol, which is not that big of a deal for me anyway. I didn't drink that much. Tip number seven is I did all of my rehab exercises. So when I would go to the doctor, when I would go to the Cairo, I would grab the exercises. I would write them down in my phone. One hour a day, I would work on those exercises. So for me, it was my shoulder. I couldn't lift my shoulder up very high. And then obviously my knee was inflamed and my foot hurt. And the last thing is I prayed. I prayed to God so much and I thank him every single day for being able to allow me to live and breathe another day. After about two months, I started to feel a little bit better. I was still a little bit dizzy and I still had headaches, but I managed to do 10 minute walks around the neighborhood or lift like two pound weights in my living room or do some balancing exercises. I never once took a pharmaceutical, which was really important to me. I didn't want to put band-aids over my issue. I wanted to deal with them. I used CBD quite a lot. I used the cream over my body and I used the oil. And then lastly, I just wanted to give you guys a few takeaways from this. As someone who's gone through something really traumatic and come out, I think you might be able to grab something from my perspective. And I really truly believe that maybe God had given me this platform in preparation for this accident so that I can share my story and hopefully impact other people that might be going through similar grieving events or trauma in their lives. My next takeaway is please don't drive distracted. Don't drive under the influence. Don't drive when you're tired, when you're texting. Don't do anything that might distract you behind the wheel. This beautiful nurse who gives her life and is so selfless, she could have ended my life that day. And you never know what could happen during that one second that you text or during that one second
second that you look at your phone. I downloaded this app called On My Way. It disables your phone from working when you're actually in the car. You can't click on the home screen and like go navigate to your text messages or Instagram. It also gives you money as you drive. So I think I have like $500 for not using my phone while I drive. Put that in the description box below in case anyone feels like that might help them. And next time you're driving and your phone buzzes, don't pick it up. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for you. It's not worth for anyone else. I learned my lesson. I wasn't wearing a helmet and that was a big no-no. And still to this day, I deal with some head stuff and my neck. And if I was wearing a helmet that day, that probably wouldn't have happened. Actually editing this video right now. And I realized that I forgot to tie it back to the one point I spoke about earlier, which was the shirt that I was wearing wearing that day. The one that said, be kind to one another. And the reason why I want to tie it back is because if someone were to have seen me in those six months after my accident, they wouldn't have been able to tell that I was hit by a car and I was going through so much trauma. And it was at that moment that I realized every single stranger that we come in contact with has gone through something difficult in their life. They may be going through it. They may have a past and that makes them so beautiful, but we have no idea what people are going through. We can just be kind to one another, we can love on each other, and we can be respectful of one another. So if that's one thing that you're able to take away from this, is just to be kind to the strangers that you see. You never know what they could be going through at home. Every single one of us has a really special story. It's what makes us all unique. So maybe we can share our stories more with each other to try to build a community that's non-judgmental and supportive of each other. Thank you for listening to my story it means so much to me and thank you to each and every one of you who actually were there for me in your prayers it all means the world to me and i really believe that i couldn't have done it without every single one of you 